doing here is um, what we're doing today is yesterday I gave you a coordinate and I asked for the six trig ratio. Do you agree? But I gave you a coordinate, x and a y, so you were always solving for r and r was always positive. Do you agree? But instead of giving you a coordinate, I can give you an actual trig ratio, tell you what quadrant it's in, and then ask for the trig ratios that I want with it. So now I could be missing an x or a y. So that's why it's so essential to draw it. Okay? So here I have tan four fifths in quadrant one. So I know I'm gonna have some I know I'm gonna have something in quadrant one. It's going to exist here. If I wanted to, I could even just do this. Could I not? Because it's going to sit in quadrant one. I don't even need to really have much sitting in the rest of it. All right. So I know that when it's in quadrant one, um, my, I have a positive x, I have a positive y, and I know I'm going to have a positive r just to help myself out. So I know that what I'm, where I'm getting to. Okay. Now tan, what's the acronym for tan? Tan, your x box. So when you get tan or you get cotan, it's equally the same as getting a coordinate. Why? Because cotan and tan just give you x, y, right? So if you're given tan or you're given cotan, you could have just been given a coordinate and we'd be in the same boat. So <clears throat> I have the coordinate 5, 4. So this is very likened to yesterday. So I can go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, put my dot, draw my line, because I always r rotate around 0, 0, and where do I draw towards the width? X axis, because I make bow tie. So I have X equals 5, I have Y equals 4, and then I'm going to need the third side, unless they ask me for cotac, which would be a really stupid question, because I would just live with a clip it, and I have to do nothing. Right? So I'm not asking for hotel. So I still need to find that third side. So I'm looking for the R. I use Pythagorean theorem. So R squared equals 4 squared plus 5 squared. So R squared equals 20. That's not 20. Wow. Remember how I prayed for myself? Because I think I need it. This is just reassures of that. 16 plus 25. My cold needs to go away. So R squared equals 40 what? 41. So we take the square root, we get what in front? Whenever we do that symbol, whenever we do the plus square root symbol, plus or minus, so R is always what? R is always what? Well, I was going to say minus is positive, so thank you, I didn't have to get that. Yeah, it's 41. Then we do our trig ratios. So we have cos, cosecant, and sine. What's cos's acronym? Cos? Extra? Right. Right. Am I done? I still need to do what? What's the mathematical terminology here? What do I still need to do? Rationalize? This is not I'm going to have root 41. And I get 5 root 41 over 41. Cosecant is best piece with what? Sine. It's always the opposite, right? If we don't remember, we have a formula sheet that tells us, correct? It says 1 over sine. So sine is what acronym? Sine your resume. So we need to do what? Resume your. So resume your. So we get 40 root 41 over resume your. 4. So we need to rationalize anything? No. No. What's the acronym for sign? Sign your resume. Sign your resume. So now we get 4 over root 41. So it's just the reciprocal of the previous one, right? And we still have to rationalize our denominator. So a lot of people find trade difficult, and they're like, oh my gosh, grade 12 is so hard. Um, every single thing we've done is grade 10 trigonometry, just so you know. We're just calling it now y's and x's. Every single thing we did was grade 10, right? We used Pythagorean theorem, which is grade 10. We used the trig ratios. The only thing is we now have three other trig ratios, but they're literally just a flip of the previous ones, right? 
Everything's great time, right? Except for that cosecant, actually. All right. And everyone likes trig in grade 10 for the most part. It's nice. So this one makes it a little more difficult. We know that it's between 90 and 180. So what quadrant is that in? 2. So I'm going to draw quadrant 2. Wow, that didn't work. Could you just draw a normal Cartesian plane and not overthink it? Yeah. I'm just drawing it so it's a little bigger so you can see it. But you can just draw your normal Cartesian plane and put it in quadrant 2, could you not? No. So, what's the acronym for this one, though? Sign your resume. Cool, let's talk about this. So, R has to be positive. So, R equals root 10, positive root 10. We know Y equals positive 3. We need X. We're in quadrant Two. What can you tell me about x in quadrant 2? It's negative. We just need to find it. Right? So that's why drawing it's so important. So we'll draw it in a second. So we have, um, we need to find, so if we have r squared equals x squared plus y squared, but now I need x, I could literally just say x squared equals r squared minus y squared. So x squared equals root 10 squared minus 3 squared. So x squared equals 10 minus 9. x squared equals 1. Square root. We do that symbol. We have to go plus or minus. In this case, because we have already actually drawn the quadrant, we know it's minus negative 1. So I go to negative 1, positive 3. Ooh, that's a terrible triangle. Pretend yours is perfect. So x equals negative 1, y equals 3, r equals root 10. Now we're solving anything, right? Oh, yeah, and the last one we did rationalize the denominator, which is grade 11. So, TAN, what's our acronym for TAN? TAN, your Xbox. TAN, your Xbox. So we're going to get TAN. Your Xbox, I'll write this down here to help myself out. So y is 3, x is negative 1, so I get negative 3. So C cat is best used with what? Sign. Sign. The T doesn't go with S and S doesn't go with C. So cosecant is best used with sign. What sign's acronym? Sign your resume. So what's cosecant? Resume your, because it's just a reciprocal. So it's going to be root 10 over root 3. So rationalizing the unit. Then cos is sub, extra, right? And x is negative 1. r is root 10. Then what do I do? Multiply by root 10, root 10. And I get negative root 10 over 10. And the reason why we multiply the top and the bottom is because we're technically multiplying by 1, so, right? Root 10 over root 10 is just 1, so it doesn't change anything. Okay, so the first one they gave me the quadrant, easiest thing ever. So they gave me just the quadrant I draw, right? Second thing, they gave me the quadrant indirectly, but still pretty easy because they gave me the quadrant. Okay, next one. <clears throat> now it gives me a trig ratio and then a trig ratio. So you should spot these because... They're a trig ratio followed by an inequality of a trig ratio. So let's talk about this. So what we need here is we need where sine is what? What does this indirectly tell me? Because I need two trig ratios. Because if I don't have two trig ratios, watch what happens. So if I, so I have cast, C-A-S-T. I'm going to erase this because it's going to be really messy and ugly. So don't draw what I'm drawing. So I need where tan is positive. Where does that happen? Quadrant 1. Quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So I actually have two spots I could draw triangles, and I want to get to 1. Okay? So I turn to here, and what does this tell me? Sine theta is what? Negative. Less than 0. I need two trig ratios to lower myself down to one quadrant, correct? So which one of those two arrows is where sine is less than 0? 
quadrant three, because all are positive here, correct? So did that kick this one out? Yeah, so now I only am going to draw quadrant three. So they indirectly gave me enough information to know that it's quadrant three. So I'm going to go back and undo that. So now I'm sitting in quadrant three. Okay. They put the arrow in, or they put the arrow. They put the negative in front. They could put the negative anywhere. They could go like this, could they not? Any of those are, are acceptable. The catch is, is that you have to figure out what letter they are. Because if one of them is an R, it has to be positive, and then you'd have to put the negative on the other one. Correct? So let's talk about this. Sign. What's our acronym for sign? Sign your resume. So it's Y over R. We know that. Sign your resume. It's Y over R. So which one of these has to be the case? First, second, third, or fourth? First, second, first, second or third? Ooh. We need a positive Y and a negative R. R. We need a uh, positive R, yes. So it would be negative 2 over 3. just had to put myself in the right place. Because R always is positive, correct? So no matter what, we have to make, pick the one where R would be positive. So when it sits out in front here, I know this is Y over R. Okay, well then this has to be the negative. Because my R has to be positive, right? So I'm not allowed to have a negative radius. So I have, and I'm in quadrant 3. In quadrant 3, what's my coordinate? Yeah, negative X, negative Y, we agree. Once you draw it, you know that that's the case as well. So, x equals negative something, we have to find that. y equals negative 2. r equals 3. So let's find x. So we get x squared equals r squared minus y squared. x squared equals 9 minus 4. x squared equals 5. I take the square root. I have to put a plus or minus whenever I do that square root symbol. And x equals what? Plus or minus? Minus. And how do we know that? Because we drew it. So there's people who will never draw it and never know what quadrant it's in and then always do poorly on this question because they don't know if it's plus or minus and they get. Do you think the plus is going to be there as an answer? Probably. It'll absolutely be there as an answer. All right. So we have negative root 5, which is a little over 2, and then negative 2, so something like that. So x equals negative root 5, y equals negative 2, r equals 3. Yes. So we go to our acronyms over there. We have cos theta, cosecant, cotangent. What's cos theta? What's cos theta? Extra, right? So we're going to get negative root 5 over 3. Cosecant is best used with sine. Sine is sine your resume. So this is resume your. So we're going to get 3 over negative 2. And cotangent is a tangent and tan your x boss. So this is x plus your, so it's going to be negative root 5 over negative 2, which is root 5 over 2. Wait a second, it's positive. Why is it positive when we're in quadrant 3? Because it's tan. Because it's tan, so tan, so tan, and tan are positive in quadrant 3. Anything with cos and sine will be negative, which the other two are, right? So it confirms kind of our answer. Okay, you guys are trying 4. Go. So... What's the acronym for this one? Cook extra rice. R is my negative in the right spot? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I know I have x equals negative 5. I know I have r equals 13. I know if I don't draw this or figure out what quadrant it's in, I'm doing a 50-50 guess on whether y is positive or negative, and the answer to both will be there, and I don't want that to be how my life goes. So I have. I'm going to do a little... So I need where tan is negative. Which quadrants is that? Where's tan negative? 
Two and four. And then I need where what? Cos theta is what? Negative. Negative as well, correct? Because it's less than, there's a negative sign here, right? So which one am I kicking out? Kicking out quadrant four. So I just really need quadrant two. They indirectly told me quadrant two. Do you agree? All right. That's not straight. Well, it's straight, but not vertically. A little better. Okay. So I need to find my y, and in here my y is going to be what in quadrant two? Positive. So that's how I find out if it's positive or negative. So I get y squared equals 13 squared minus negative 5 squared. So y squared equals 169 minus 25. y squared equals 144. y equals plus or minus root 144. 12, so y equals 12. Okay. So we need negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Somewhere here. So I have x equals negative 5, y equals 12, r equals 13. Now what if you found out your y was like 15 or 16 or 17 or 18? You should be no. sus. Why? Because it can't be bigger than R. Can't be bigger than R. Why? Because R is how big is your marks. R is across from the large side, correct? <coughs> now remember, if this is, let's think about it, your angle correlates to your side length, right? So if this is 90, we agree? Mm -hmm. What do we suspect this angle could be close to? Is it closer to 90 or 0? Closer to 90, because what lies side length across from it? 12. My R is 13, so this is going to be quite a large angle, right? Your angle correlates to your side length. If your side length is large, your angle is large, right? And if my side length, if I have a 90, and my, if my 90 is across from 13, then the one that's across from 12 will be pretty big, right? Because it correlates to the length of the angle and the side length. So I look at my 90, see what its length is, and then I can kind of guesstimate where my other angle would fall. Okay, so I have sine, your resume. So we have 12 over 13. Secant is across the coast. Cook extra right, so she writes extra. So I get 13 over negative 5. So I can leave it that. I put the negative in front, I put the negative on the top. And then tan your x box. So I get 12 over negative 5. I leave it like that. I could rewrite it as negative 12 over 5. I could rewrite it as negative 12 over 5. All of which are equally as good. Okay? So then we're going ahead. Pass this because we did this yesterday. So I'll just pass this. This here. So now we're approaching what we kind of looked at for the daily quiz. Except it's not in the perfect format that we need. So it says 2 sine theta equals 1. When we were doing them this morning, I give you like sine theta equals root 3 over 2, and then you tell me where the theta lands at 3 over 2, right? So what's the problem with this one currently? 2 sine theta equals 1. There's a 2 over there. There's a 2 over there. Yeah. Over there. So we need to get rid of it. How are we going to move it? Divide. Divide. It is true. So sine theta equals a half. So now is it in more of a better position for us to work with? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, try it out. I want it between 0 and 360. Should be very quick. So I know at the very minimum, I have sine theta equals a half. And it's a positive a half. So I need where sine is positive, right? If I looked at my cast... It would give me a hint that it's somewhere here and somewhere here. We agree? So I look for where y is equal to a half over there. So I'm going to get what? 30 degrees and 150. Because actually sine a half gets me a reference angle of 30, doesn't it? Remember reference angles are just those bow tie angles? They're all at 30, correct? 
So the negative signs then would end up being here and here. Because remember, it's just reflections of each other. That's all the unit circle is. Quadrant one repeated in all different quadrants with the appropriate positives and negatives based off of what coordinate would be positive or negative in that quadrant. All right, flipping over. We're going to go past that. We're going to go past these two because these two are special circumstances. We will come back to those. We're going to go here. Cos theta equals zero. Where the heck does that happen? What is cos the same as? X. So I'm looking where my x's are zero. Yeah, so here would be where an x is zero, and here is where an x is zero. So it'd be 90 degrees and 270. If I just write something like this, is that good? What this is left to be full mark. She has to go search for your answer and hope for the best. Is there even an answer here? So when they say cos theta equals zero, and theta has between zero and 360, we're trying to find what theta is, right? So we at least have to have theta equals in order for the answer to be correct, right? Because hmm? you can draw it like a cowboy. You can give it one of these. It's a cowboy. That's also sometimes a theta. Depends on which form you're using. Maybe you can put a line through it. Depends on the, the actual um, text you're using. So it's 90 and 270. I like to draw my thetas like cowboys. Okay. Tan theta is undefined. Tan theta is undefined. Tan is 1 over what? Tan? Tan your x box? I heard y. I, I heard 1, but it was y over x. Yep. And for in order for something to be undefined, what do I need? X to be 0. X to be 0. Oh. What did we just find, people? Where x is equal to zero. What? We already found. Hmm. We found the answer. Winning. Ninety. Two seventy. Okay. And we're gonna mosey to the next page after that. What is 1 over root 2 just the same as, guys? Uh, root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. I want you to do A and B. Then we're going to amp up our game. Honestly, we, we hit C and D and people like, it's like your brains all fall apart. Because you're like, it's not just between 0 and 2 pi. But then I'm like, okay, give me coterminal angle between this and this. And you're like, poof, 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 answers. Then you're like, I mean, it's just the same thing. Okay? It's time. So we're, yeah, it is. Hey, it is. So we're going to try A and B. Try them out first, and then we're going to go to the next thing that I would say is 2% harder, but you guys treat like it's 100% harder. So we are looking for where this cos theta equals negative root 2 over 2, technically, because that's just the rationalized version. Cos is the same as what? X. Yeah. And we want where cos is negative. So that's going to be, voila. Voila. Right? Yeah. That makes sense. Since where x is negative. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So where does this one be exist? 135, yeah. And this one's at 225. So this is perfectly good of an answer. Mrs. Lepp will be just super happy with the fact that you guys just put them on a page somewhere and I have to go find them. I draw them to help visualize because when it gets harder, so the You don't have to, though. All right. Let's look at the next one. It's sine. It's between 0 and 2 pi, not inclusive of 2 pi. So if 2 pi was an answer, I wouldn't keep it, right? Okay. And it's sine. Sine is what? Y. So I'm looking where y is negative, which is here and here. That's also where sine is negative. Weirdly enough, because sine correlates with y, and y is negative in the quadrant, right? That's why caps works. Okay, so it's a negative root 3 over 2. So that's at what? Negative 
Where is it at? 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 2. You're just looking where the y is negative root 3 over 2 and then giving me the angles that are on there, right? Nothing crazy. Is everyone following along or do I have lost people? Are we agreeing? You guys will give me the same face whether you get it or not. Like it's like this, like I'm really tired and I don't care. Thing. That's the accurate face that you're carrying? Okay. Now, C and D look much more complicated because they have different domains, right? Do you know what Mrs. Left says to that? Pooey. I don't care. We are just going to do it on the unit circle first. Okay? So, oh, the first one's in radians. I'm going to do it on the unit circle in radians. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. Right? Not going to make this overwhelm me. Not going to have a little bit of a panic. I'm just going to say, cool, it wants it in radians. So I'm going to pretend for the time being that, that it's between 0 and 2 pi. It's not. Don't care. I'm going to deal with that in a second. I'm going to find it between 0 and 2 pi first off. Okay? All right, it's where tan theta equals 1. Guys, tan theta is the same as tan your Xbox, right? And so it, we're looking for where if we take two numbers and we divide them, we would get 1. When does that happen? When you take two numbers that are the same and divide them. Where are two numbers the same on our unit circles? At all the 45s. All the 45s, right? Some of the 45s, I'll get negative 1, because one of them is positive, one of them is negative, which is quadrants 3 and 4. That's a lie, 2 and 4. And some of them, they're both negative or both positive, like 1 and 3, and therefore they would come out as positive, correct? So I'm trying to find out on my Cartesian plane here where I would get positive 1 for 10. Well, that would happen here and here. Don't know why it's changing colors, but cool. Because here I have root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. And when I divide them, I would get positive 1. And here I have negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. And when I divide them, I would get positive 1. Correct? The other two quadrants would get me negative ones, right? Because one of them is positive and one of them is negative. And when I divide a positive by a negative, I get negative. Do we agree? Everyone's following me here? So... Cool. Let's write down the answers to those from 0 to 2 pi, because that's where I want to go. I don't care what restricted domain they gave me right now. I'm like, dude, I don't want to deal with you right now. So I write down what I have sitting here. So the first one is pi over 4. And then this one is 5 pi over 4. Do we agree? Because I just found them off my unit circle, right? Nothing crazy. We all following along? Okay. Once we get that, then we say, okay, now I'm going to go look at my restricted domain. My restricted domain is from negative pi to pi, so I'm crossing over a zero. Correct? So if I drew this as a number line to help myself out, it would be like negative pi, number line, I guess this would be, this would be a closed dot because it's equal to. So I would be negative pi. That looks like decimal pi. That's not meant to be that. So it would be a closed dot. Negative pi. Here would be zero, correct? And then I would work my way to an open dot and pi. Why is it open? It's not equal to. Because it's not equal to. Okay? So, what am I doing? I'm being allowed to rotate this way to pi, correct? And I'm being allowed to rotate this way to negative pi. So which one of my solutions works? The pi over 4 works because it falls in that 0 to pi range. Correct? So that's one of my solutions. Theta equals pi over 4. What's the problem with my 5 pi over 4 one? Yeah? It's greater than pi. Can I find a coterminal perhaps? That would make it fit between the 0 and negative pi? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Negative pi over 4. Negative pi over 4? No. Negative pi over 4 is here. Oh. Negative pi over 4. 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 Negative pi over 4
Four. Negative 3 pi over 4 would work, because that would be in that same spot. Correct? How can we just find a coterminal, guys? We could just take 5 pi over 4 and do what to it? Keep adding 2 pi's. And I'm making it bigger. What do I want to do? Subtract 2 pi. If I want to subtract 2 pi, I need it to be over 4. Correct? So this is going to actually be... 8 pi over 4, wouldn't it? That makes sense. And then I would get negative 3 pi over 4, which is what you guys just said. So we start at 5 pi over 4, which I need to get rid of. I just said volleyball, so I'm not going to make it. Oh, it's too good. So, negative 3 pi over 4 is the answer. So, guys, people get overwhelmed by these. Could you technically convert your restricted domain into degrees because degrees make a little more sense to you? Oh. Absolutely you can. But does your answer have to be in radians? Oh. Absolutely it does. So could I say, okay, this is confusing to me, but negative pi is negative 180 degrees. Join me. Okay, switch it. It's fine. And then pi, well, we're really switching things here. And then pi is 180. So we're trying to get between negative 180 to 0, and then 0 to 180. And that often makes a little more sense for people. They're like, okay, I can kind of visualize that. That pi graph doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Then we know that this one is at 45. And we know that this one is at 225. And then I say to myself, oh, 45, that fits. We agree? So I could write theta equals 45 for myself for right now, but not box that because that's not the correct answer, correct? And then I would look at 225 and I would say, oh, 225 is like here on my number line. So it's too big. We agree? So then I would have to take a coterminal of it. And so I would go 225, which I did in radians, and I'd subtract my 315 and I would get one negative 135. And then I would say, oh, negative 135, that falls here. That's a good one. Right? Because it falls between 0 and negative 180. So negative 135. I like that one. They both fit. Then I have my two answers, and then I just say, okay, well, this divided by 180 is pi over 4. Divide this 180 is negative 3 pi over 4, and box that. So could I do that? Do I get the same answers? Does it make a little more sense sometimes if it's in degrees? Sure. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> my poor brain that needs sleep. There we go. 315. I don't even know. That's a 45 degree reference angle though in quadrant four, just in case you were wondering. Not helpful in this instance. But if it was tan theta equals negative one, that would be a solution. I don't even, I got nothing. Okay. Um, what I want you guys to do here is I want you to try, I'm going to give you some questions for Homebird. Now we're going to work on the harder ones tomorrow. And then we're almost done the entire unit. The test will be next Thursday. <laughs> 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 So you're just doing number 10. It's a very short little lesson because tomorrow what we're going to look at is degree 2. So what if I give you a quadratic? Well, we just factor it. We get two answers. Or what if I give you an, um, an answer that is still on the unit circle, but it's not at 0, 30, 45, 60, 90? What if it's one that's 47.3 degrees? Right? What if it's that? How do we deal with that? Okay? So... Very short little amount of homework for sure.